We're going to have a look at a concrete block construction tiled eaves detail, okay? So by the end of this tutorial, we should be able to draw one of these, okay? So we're going to make a drawing of this here uh, to a scale of 1 as to 5, okay? So this is just a scenario. It's not based directly on a question, but it's based on a detail that we need to know, okay? So it's basically here. We have an eaves detail for a 400 millimeter concrete block wall with 150 millimeter cavity insulation and a proprietary cavity closer. Rafters and joists are 150 millimeters. The roof pitch is 30 degrees. 50 millimeter insulated plasterboard is attached under the joist, okay? What we're saying there is the rafters are 150. The wall is 400 mil altogether. There's 150 mil insulation. We have our cavity closer. We have our insulated plasterboard, okay? And we also, we can see there we have our air tightness also in green, all right? And we have our our wall tie in position there too with the insulation placed tightly again the internal leaf and we have our we have our felt also which is not coming through there that well but there's a blue line running there and also our tiles in position so by the end of this we're going to know how to draw that entire section okay so let's move on so this is an example a 3d example of what we're going to do so these are the only difference here is these are actually this is a slate detail not a tile one but they're all the members of the roof are the same we have our joists our rafters our felt okay we have our two block layers here we have our insulation we have our cavity closer as well here we have our fascia and our soffit also okay and this is just a section of it here now so um the first thing i want to explain to you really quick is the position of the the, the rafter okay on the wall plate and how we figure out the distances and so on for that so what i have here is an example of just an internal uh block wall going up okay so i'm going to put our wall plate in position now our 75 by 100 wall plate and i'm going to draw up a line here now and this line is inclined at 30 degrees because the roof pitch is 30 degrees if it was 45 degrees roof pitch you'd, you'd put this line in then at 45 and make sure touches the corner here the next thing we're going to do now is um we're going to basically because the rafters uh, are 150 mil we're going to put a distance on that now because we're drawing this at a scale of one is to five that's coming up as 30 okay so if we divide 150 by five that's giving us 30 so if we divide 30 then by three it's kind of giving us 10 and yeah, we're left with 20 then on top so I'll show you what I mean now. I'm going to draw up a line here now at 20. And the next line then in the bottom is going to be down 10. So what's that's given us here is the bird's mouth. If we, when you're cutting her after, you take out this cut here at the bottom and it's a little bird's mouth cut. So that's how you know, if that rafter was 200 mil thick, what you'd have to do is divide 200 by three and so on after you scale it down. And then you'd have one third at the bottom and two thirds at the top. And it's always that that way for a traditional cut roof. Okay. So that also then leads on to the position of our external leaf after we've established our rafter. Because our external leaf comes up as far until it touches here. And that's where that ends. And then we'd put in our insulation. But that's one important aspect of this question looked at now. Okay. The two thirds, one third for our bird's mouth cut. Now, right. And that's just our uh, fascia in position there. Right, so the next thing we're going to look at so is the concrete roof tile dimensions. So these are the concrete roof tiles here. I'm sure we've seen them all before. They're pretty heavy roof tile. They're generally fairly thick. Okay, about maybe 20 mil thick. Could be a little bit more, uh, depending on the manufacturer and so on. But what I'm going to show us here is full scale dimensions of a concrete roof tile. They're approximately 400 mil. Now they can vary. They can be slightly longer. But for the purpose of what we're doing here, 400 mil is close enough um then the the little hook at the back is about 40 mil deep and then there's a step uh, the depth of the hook i suppose is 25 millimeters and the tile itself is 20 mil thick okay as we see it as we're standing on the ground looking up we see this part here okay now a one to five scale dimension of that so is basically with eight if you divide all these measurements of five it's going to give you 80 is the length eight mil deep five mil of a hook on it four mil thick and we'll have 75 from here to here now that's important that we we kind of know these measurements okay we're able to scale them down at least and we know them okay so they're very important right our ones they're the ones we're going to use now 
So moving on so to the next factor that we need to consider, which is how you position the roof tiles actually on the roof. So what I'm going to do here is just draw in a rafter. I'm going to put my fascia here on it. The next thing I'm going to do then is our felt hole which goes on next, our roofing membrane should I say. From the front tip of your fascia, you're going to measure back 300 mil. And that's going to give you the position of the top of your uh, timber batten. Okay, so I'm going to draw in my first timber batten. Okay, so from the front of your fascia up to the top is 300 mil and that batten goes down. Okay, so that's 25 by um, 50 batten. It's 25 tall, 50 uh, high there, right? The thickness and the weight, should I say, is 25 by 50. But when you scale that down, then you're left with by one is to five. You're left, that's 10 mil and this is five here. After the next one up then is 250 from the top of that up to the top of this one here, top to top, okay? And all the rest of them there after that are 250 also, okay? So that's our lats now in position. That's very important that we position these correctly on the roof now. Very important that we do that. 300 from the front tip of your fascia up to here, 250 from there and there after, okay? So if you're putting on 10 rows, each of the one after that is 250 mil apart. Now the next thing we're going to look at, so is the roof tile, how we position the roof tile on it. So from the top back of your um, uh, timber batten here, you're going to draw a line out, use the set square and just draw it and have the line touch, just uh, touching the front tip of the fascia here and extend it out. And then we know the distance of that now from our scale down dimensions on the previous slide was 75 millimeters. And we're going to go up four now because that's the scale down thickness of it. Then we're going to get our set squares. And we're going to set square lines parallel back and back to our 80. So this top line is 80 mil now and the bottom one here is 75. And here we have our little hook at the back. So we're putting in our hook, right? And that should line up then for the next one. So I'm going to put in the next one now. You shoot your next line out also using your set square and you measure up your four mil. You set square back and you position your hook in position there. That's your second one done then. So I'm just going to quickly now put in the third one also, right? So that's my third one in position. So it's very important that we get them right. The next thing I want to do then is I'm going to heavy them in when I know I'm correct. So they're correct now, okay? The next thing we just I just need to show you really quickly is the fact that the height of your fascia is very important in relation to your roof. If the fascia is too low, the front tile here will slope down. It'll end up with a gap here. It will look unsightly. In terms of the structure of the building, it will allow rain and so on to penetrate up here. They needs to be sitting tight here on the top, on the edge where they intersect, okay? So the rule of thumb there is basically the fascia board must extend up at least twice the height of the slate and batten. So if the, 20, if the slate and batten here, in this case, is 25, so this needs to be at least 50, okay? So from the distance between here, this front face here, if, this, if these are 25 mil tall, when you measure from there up, it needs to be at least 50 to 55 for that to work, okay? But you can test it. If you draw in your lines right, you know that this line is intersecting here. When you draw in your first one, then you'll know that the second line going back should intersect here also, okay? So the rule of thumb is generally a, a, at least twice the height here, okay? Don't go too excessive either. You'll have too much of a slope, okay? But it just forms the, the proper proportion here at the front of the roof, and it doesn't, it means the front slate is is sitting, sorry, the front roof tile is sitting up in the correct location, okay? So that's that covered now. The next thing um, we're going to look at, so, is how we construct the question itself, okay? So I've scaled down some of the main measurements here. So I'm going to start now, we're going to start with our actual drawing on our page, and I'm going to show you my drawing in a few moments. So this is my animation, I'm going to show you my drawing now in a few moments. So that's, this is my internal leaf here. Then on top of that, I have my wall plate. My wall plate is 100 mil, by 75 so in the case of the scale to one and sorry in this in the case of the one is to five scale that's going to be a hundred sorry it's going to be 20 by 15 okay so that's the measurements of that then now look i'm putting in my line here at 30 degrees okay i'm splitting i'm going up just like i did before two thirds at the top one third at the bottom i'm drawing in my rafter okay and then i'm getting my location now for my external leaf Okay, that's my external block leaf there. Now I'm putting in my jice in position there. The rafters and the jice have gone in. The next thing I'm doing now is I'm putting in my, my insulation against the internal leaf, okay? So I'm just going to color code in that there now also. So if you've color, please use color also. You don't necessarily have to, but it enhances your work a little bit, okay guys? 
So after that then I have my cavity closure or cavity barrier. That's to close the cavity and prevent air or thermal lupin happen. Okay, and it's very important that it's closed uh, for in case of fire also. Okay, to prevent oxygen or air getting through there. Okay, it extends the the fire resistance capacity house just like a fire door. You know, it increases the um, the duration that the building remains intact. We'll say. Okay, so um, after that, then I'm going to put in the eaves ventilator there uh, to allow ventilation up, and then your insulation goes in under that. Okay, so I'm going to include that's my. Um, your insulation in position there your quilted insulation or your bat insulation they're also called okay so that goes in there now the next thing i'm going to do then is i'm just going to quickly insert my fascia board there so that distance there it can be i'm going 250 you could be 300 there also that's full scale now so you'd have to scale that down all right for your one is to five um so that's my fascia and then my soffit i'm putting in my soffit next with my air vent there so there's a 25 mil air vent here in it okay so this is basically a little bracket that holds my soffit in position okay um to stop it collapsing down basically and the plaster also acts as a method of holding it in position so a soffit with 25 mil continuous vent opening to allow air in okay very important that the roof can breathe the timber needs to breathe okay so air needs to get in right so my airtight membrane then is attached under my joist and must come down along the, the timber and be and come down along the masonry also because we're going to see why now in a moment that's my 50 mil insulated slab underneath okay so that's a kind of a rigid insulation so i'm showing it just like here as a rigid insulation now if if you're if it's easier for you to do that other one you can also do it the other way or you can just color code it um yellow you know what i mean um my internal plaster then that acts as the airproof barrier effectively for a concrete block so that's why we extend this down here um to make sure that we have it the, that the building is airtight also okay so that's that then we have our tilt and fillet there and i'm going to draw in my slates sorry my tiles now so we know how they look this is me going up my 300 there and drawing in my uh your my battens okay the next thing i'm going to do now is um lightly position very lightly and they should line up so i know they're lining up now because they're lining up just fine there they're nice and parallel so i'm going to heavy those in and i'm going to insert in my third one also okay so that's pretty much that the top of the roof taken care of i have my gutter in position here also and i'm just showing that the air ventilation the air passing up and in and into the cold space and the roof which is up here all right the next thing I'm putting in then is my um, stainless steel wall tie. That's very important that that goes in position. And my external plaster also. Okay. And then I'm just labeling in that as my concrete block. So that's pretty much the drawing done there. Okay. So there, those are all my main details there. I could have included... Um, there, there, you could also include 50 mil insulation in here if you want, but it's not. I didn't really specify that in the question. But you'd still have to put your internal plaster and then stick with dabs of adhesive your internal um, rigid plasterboard, uh, insulated plasterboard, should I say, onto that there. Is that okay? Now, then, then the next thing where I'm going to move on to is my own drawing, essentially. So this is my own drawing of it. Now, I scanned it in so that some of the color has faded a little bit and so on but we can see my air tight the felt uh here or the roofing membrane is the blue line here so you represent that with a blue pen it didn't come through that well there and that but um and i'm just labeling it up here now also so i'm going to fly through the labeling so your drawing should look something similar to this one here they're both the same the other one is just an animated version of this drawing here essentially okay so that's your drawing done so that's the tile de details and please make sure you know how to draw the tiles and you know the position of the bird's mouth as well. So it's up one third of the way from the bottom. And that's to give it more strength, essentially. If you went in halfway, you'd lose strength and you'd weaken your eave detail here, okay? It would interfere with the structural stability of it. So it's very important that it's one third of the way, okay? So that's basically the main aspect of that question covered, guys, okay? So make sure you can draw it yourselves anyway. Right, we'll leave it at that so. Thanks, guys.